We're live. Hey there, Matt Clark here with Stefan from Project Life Mastery. So I'm up here, I flew up here to Vancouver from uh, hometown of Austin, which most of you probably know, uh, but flew up here to Vancouver because I have exciting gift for Stefan based on a really cool accomplishment that he had recently. So I'll just go ahead and pull it out. As you can probably see, this is a giant check, but this is $50,000. So $50,000, we as a company, Amazing.com, have donated to a charity that Stefan chose called We Charity and uh, on behalf of him. And so we'll talk a little bit about kind of why we've done this. But first, yeah, I just want to say congratulations. Well, thank you. Awesome I yeah. appreciate it. This is amazing. Yep. Yeah. So the way this all came about is um, a lot of you all, if you've been kind of following our social media, uh, on our email list, that we just did a big release of Amazing Selling Machines. So it's actually the eighth one. This is our flagship program teaches you everything about selling on Amazon, how to build a business from start to finish. And uh, the way we get the word out about this amazing program that's had so many success stories is people like Stefan, you know, that have amazing communities of people that are interested in changing their lives. And so we held a contest uh, for people that could refer the most people to Amazing Selling Machine. And Stefan won kind of a, by a landslide, absolutely dominated the competition. We had a lot of great people referring people. And so Stefan referred a lot of people uh, through his YouTube channel and the other ways that he reaches people. And one of the prizes that you get was a $50,000 donation to the charity of your choice. And so Stefan won, so I kind of wanted to come here, make a personal visit up to Vancouver uh, and give him this check because it's, it's an amazing thing uh, for him. It's an amazing thing for us. It's an amazing thing, especially for the charity. So first thing I'd like to do is kind of talk a little bit about like what is this charity all about and kind of why did you choose this one? Yeah, no, this is amazing. I want to thank you so much just for taking the time to, to come all the way up here and everything. Really appreciate it. Uh, so we.org is an organization that I've been involved with for the last year or two. It actually was, um, they merged with another organization called Imagine One Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're involved in a lot of different, um, a lot of different projects, but the, the, the part that I've been most passionate about has been education. Mm -hmm. And um, in the past, I've made donations and helped to build schools in parts of the world like Ethiopia, Kenya. In fact, I was just, uh, my girlfriend and I were just in Ethiopia uh, for a trip there where we funded a school. We went for a school inauguration, and we actually got to see the school that they you know, would go to school at beforehand and the new school. And um, for me, that's just been a personal thing because I know the power of education. Uh, you guys are about education as well, helping people um, change their lives through training and information. So that's made an impact in my life. A lot of these um, you know, kids and, and people in this part of the world, they, uh, they don't go to school. They don't know how to, 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 to read, to write, speak English. And oftentimes, they'll just kind of stay, stay where they're at. They're not going to really progress unless they are empowered through education. And one of the, the biggest challenges that we have going to those communities is educating the families and the value of education because mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, these families, you know, they work out in the farms, they have to go to the well to get water and they don't understand why they would have their kids go to school when instead they could just have them work in the farm and support the family that way. So yeah. it's been a, um, yeah, it's just an amazing thing that uh, I've been a part of, and um, that's. So, so, how did you find out about it? Like, how did you like? How did you first get involved with them? Yeah, so I actually was involved. Um, I've been involved involved in a few different groups, and I was looking at what is, you know, what is something that could be a bigger part of my mission, not just because I'm passionate about self development. I've got my YouTube, and I help people that you know help people online in different ways. But I was thinking, you know, I want to get behind something even bigger than that, mm. and. Uh, I've just been kind of looking for different organizations, different things that I could support. And I thought, you know, the schools and education would be something that can make a significant difference in the world. It's aligned with, with my values, my brand. Um, I've also uh, done fundraising campaigns on my YouTube to my followers and my social media to get other people involved and you, bringing awareness to those things too. So yep. um, I thought it'd be something that other people can get involved in and support. And, um, so did and, you kind of find them online? Or? Yeah, well, Weed's actually pretty big. They have something called Weed Day. I'm not sure if you heard of that mm -hmm. before, but they actually do it in all, you know, LA, Vancouver. They have thousands and thousands, like fill out stadiums and everything oh, wow. of things that they do. Yeah. So they're, they're pretty big. Um, and I actually was introduced to We through um, Imagine One Day, which was more of a, a local group here in Canada. Oh, okay. And they would partner with different organizations and whatnot, and they're involved in Ethiopia. So they just so happened to merge with WE. 
And just the last trip that we were actually there in Ethiopia, I, I got to uh, really experience it and meet the WE organization and spend time with them and, and uh, you know, work with them on, on setting up fundraising campaigns on the back end. Mm -hmm. And so they've been very generous in working with me and very supportive of what we do. So Sweet. That's yeah. awesome. So, you know, uh, what do you think this $50,000 will do? Do you have a sense of, like, what kind of impact that can have? I mean, like, sure. it's not a small amount of money, whether you're in North America, but especially if you're in kind of a country that's not doing so well economically, like what kind of impact do you think that'll have? Yeah, so this $50,000 is gonna to go towards funding two different schools. Mm. Uh, one is gonna be in Ethiopia, and one is gonna be in Kenya. Um, if I were to show you, I've, I, when I was there, I took all this video footage and stuff, um, but the schools that they currently have are literally a bunch of like twigs and sticks mm. kind of like put together, and they there's 30 kids that are literally kind of crammed into a space maybe you know, no bigger than what we're in here, and they'll be sitting on rocks and everything, and that's how they learn. And what this will provide is an actual, uh, you know, classrooms, like an actual building and structure, books, a library. Um, the cool thing I love also is, uh, you know, when we went there, all the different, all the kids have a vision for their life and goals. Mm. So we're going to talk about goal setting, but yeah. I really love that. And, and, um, you know, they believe that by making sure that all the kids have goals, they can achieve anything they want. And they really install that belief system into the kids as well, um, which I think is very important because oftentimes they don't believe that their life can be greater than what it, what it is. And through education and then helping set goals and help them dream of different possibilities, they believe they can be doctors, they can be, you know, leaders of the world, they can be engineers, they can you know, be whatever they want to be. So um, that's what I'm excited about with it. But it's going to provide uh, the classrooms, the books, the libraries, everything for them. Sweet. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I know everyone here, me, Jason, Mike, Rich, everyone at Amazing.com, like we're super excited that we're able to have this sort of impact. So uh, yeah, I mean, thank you. And uh, hopefully this, this does a lot of good and we hear about it later. Sure. Uh, so, so what I'd like to do is, you know, up here in Vancouver, by the way, we're live. So we're getting a lot of people commenting. So we've got uh, Annette, we've got uh, Vishwajit, uh, Jinto, Carolyn, uh, Javier, so thanks everyone for joining us. So what we're going to talk about is, um, you know, Stefan does a lot on social media, does a lot with content marketing. So I figured while I was here in Vancouver kind of delivering this uh, donation check, which if you're joining us late, you can replay this video and kind of watch the thing from the beginning to hear all about it. But what I want to do is, because this is kind of your, your bread and butter, is talk a little bit about like how this applies to Amazon. Because mm -hmm. you know a lot about Amazon, you've built an Amazon business, you've been involved in coaching people and helping people. And so like I kind of have a theory myself about ways that people can do extremely well, and it's kind of more than a theory. Like I've, we, we have people that have really validated this, mm -hmm. but a way that you can use certain aspects of social media right now to absolutely crush it on Amazon and not have to spend a dime on ads. Yeah. Zero ad cost. And so I know a lot of people watching here, they either sell on Amazon or they want to sell on Amazon. And uh, you know, the typical kind of model, which is great, this is what we teach, so it's not like it's kind of, this is not the bad way to do it, but is you basically get your products live on Amazon, you get some reviews, uh, you get your listing optimized, and usually kind of like your first plan of attack in terms of getting traffic, once you kind of uh, get those fundamentals in place, is turning on ads. Mm -hmm. And ads are great, ads with Amazon, you can dial them in so that they're profitable, but you're still spending money. Yeah. And so you have to manage it so it doesn't get out of control. And at some point, there's only so much you can spend profitably because yeah. there's only so much traffic, there's so many competitors. But the way that you have kind of like looked at social media, I know we were having a conversation yesterday, is that like you're, you're pretty confident that no matter what product you sell on Amazon, you can probably make it work Mm -hmm. if you're getting your own traffic. Mm -hmm. And so you're not going out there and competing for keywords on Amazon. You're basically building an audience, using social yeah. media, driving that to your own Amazon product. So that person basically, by the time they get to Amazon, it's already kind of endorsed yeah. traffic. They're more or less just going there to complete the purchase, which mm -hmm. is completely different. And you know, you, you, we've been involved with people that have proven this. Uh, I know we were talking about somebody yesterday, you all were saying does like $10,000 a month just with basically Instagram posting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we'd like to have a conversation about this because I think there's ways to do it on Facebook and other channels, but let's talk a little bit about, so you got the average person out there, let's say they're at the very beginning. Like let's say they've just got a product live on Amazon, they've got their five to 10 reviews, they've got their listing, it looks good, they've got good photos and all that sort of stuff, and they're like, how do I start getting people to see this thing? Mm -hmm. 
So where would you kind of tell that person to start in terms of using yeah. social media to really start ramping things up? Yeah, so I think first it's looking at it as bigger than just an Amazon business. Amazon is the platform that we use to launch our product. They've got hundreds of millions of people on there. They have the trust, the credibility, they handle the payments, they handle the fulfillment, they handle a lot for you. Yeah. And one of the main, I think, ways that people sell their product is they look at how they can rank their product on Amazon search, because Amazon's a search engine, as well as running Amazon ads. And that's fantastic, you should definitely do that because you know people are already on Amazon and it's gonna be one of the easiest ways that you can sell. But the challenge is, is that everyone else is doing that. All your competitors are also doing that as well. And it kind of becomes a, kind of a race to the top of the keyword or who has more reviews or customers are looking through comparing this product versus that product. And it's, it, it's, not, it's just one pillar and I look at multiple pillars and I, I'm a big fan of Jay Abraham. He calls it building a Parthenon mm. where you have multiple pillars that sustain it. So even if yeah. one pillar gets removed, you still have multiple pillars. So I look at what are ways you can market your product outside of Amazon. So social media, uh, you know, there's so many different platforms. Google is the most popular website on the internet according to Alexa. Second is YouTube and Facebook. Yahoo is up there, Instagram. So I, I think people are crazy not to use those. You know, if those are the most popular websites, just like how Amazon's so popular, there's so many people there, why not use those other pieces too? So I, the way that I look at the internet is it's just made up of content. Mm -hmm. um, video, images, text, audio. And people are constantly consuming content. Right now we're creating content. You scroll through your Facebook feed, content, video, article, text, images. Um, so. Becoming a content creator, I think, is one of the most important, most valuable skills. And the way that I approach it with an Amazon product is looking at, you can create content related to your product, okay? So it could be content, let's say you sell a yoga mat, it could be uh, you know, videos or articles or images centered around your product, okay? You could put that up on social media, you could do YouTube videos about that, you could write articles about it. But I also take a step back even further looking at the overall niche or market that you're in. Mm. So if you're, selling, uh, you know, if you're selling a spatula, you're not really just in the spatula niche, you might be in the kitchenware or the cooking niche. Mm. And when you take a, a broader perspective of your market, it gives you a lot more options to be able to cr create content with. And I think you just gotta really know the niche and the market that you're in, what people want, what their biggest problems are, the biggest challenges are, what type of content they're already consuming, and then you decide and you identify which platform is my market or demographic really on. If, if it's Pinterest, great. How can we create content for Pinterest that adds value, that's relevant to the niche market? We can attract followers, traffic from that that we can then funnel into our product on Amazon. Mm -hmm. If it's on YouTube, great. How can, can we create valuable YouTube videos that add value to this niche, it's relevant. You can do videos around it, attract people, and of course YouTube's a search engine so you can rank your videos. You can build that trust, that relationship through content that, that is really gonna help convert your product that much more. Mm -hmm. And you're building a brand. So that's kind of the approach that I take with my business and the people that I try to coach and help, is how you can build a brand, a relationship with people, build that trust because when you have that, and people are consuming your content, you're adding more value than anyone else, then they're, you know, you're linking them direct to your Amazon product. They're not gonna be comparing and scrolling through, comparing this product to any other one out there. Right. They're already kind of pre-sold. So they're already a warm or a hot lead versus a cold lead. And so that's, I think, what, one of the biggest things that, that content marketing allows you to do. Yeah, so a couple questions. So like one is that I think people always you know, kind of struggle with is they're like, I started an internet business because I wouldn't be able to run this thing from a beach in Thailand. Like yeah. I don't want to have to have, you know, a video studio and all this kind of stuff. So like first question is, is like, and in my personal opinion, like if you're willing to put your kind of name and face out there and do videos, you don't have to be an actor. Look at all the people that are on YouTube creating videos. Uh, just regular people just turn it on a camera. I mean, look at how popular reality TV is these yeah. days. It's not because these are people that, you know, went to world's greatest acting schools. It's just regular people and that's what people like watching. I think I heard from a friend of mine that, that's got a, a young daughter. He was saying like one of the most popular, you all probably know this better than I do, but it says one of the most popular YouTube channels is a channel with like kids playing with toys. Because yeah. I guess like the little kids like watching kids playing with yeah. toys, the weirdest thing. Not yeah. sort of fancy Pixar movies, but literally other kids playing with toys. And so what I'm saying is that like if you're able to, if you're willing to do videos yourself, uh, my opinion, that's absolutely what you want to do. 
demo your product, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. But what if somebody, for whatever reason, just doesn't want to do that? Like they yeah. don't want to put their face behind the camera, they don't want to have to do videos, but they still want to be able to leverage videos um, on YouTube, on Facebook, maybe even live video if possible. Like mm -hmm. how would you think they kind of like cross that hurdle? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to necessarily be the person that's putting yourself out there. I understand a lot of people, they just want to be more behind the scenes. Even though, yeah, it, it is an advantage if you are willing to be the face of your product, you can build that, you know, share your story, build that trust, that relationship, that can give you an incredible advantage, but you don't need to. Um, you can find influencers. You know, the great thing is there's huge, you know, people on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook that have the following, they're the face, they're putting themselves out there, they have the audience, they have the trust, and you can then approach those people and you could either offer to give your product for free or you can pay them and they'll promote your product for you. Mm -hmm. um, so similar to what Nike does, you know, Nike has the apparel. What they do is they find celebrities, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, different celebrities that are influencers, right? They're creating content, they have their own per brand and they sponsor them or they partner with them. Um, so it's a very common thing that uh, a lot of the bigger brands will do is they're trying to find people that already have the following, they'll pay them, they'll work with them. Um, so that's another option too. Um, of course, you could hire someone if you wanted to be, to be the face of the product, but that costs money and I, a lot of people might not be in that position to. Um, you could even sponsor podcasts out there. Let's say you've got some uh, supplements that you sell or some sort of health or fitness line. You can find the podca podcasters or the influencers out there and sponsor them, work with them. You can just pay them for one-off promotion so mm -hmm. they can create the content for you. Um, the other option too, you know, with, with social media, um, and even with things like article writing, blogging, because you know, Google is still the number one uh, website, number one search engine, is you could hire writers to write content for you. And if you learn some SEO, search engine optimization, you can rank those articles and pieces of content and you can find writers fairly inexpensive to do some of that stuff for you too. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different options, a lot of different ways of going about it. It's hard to tackle it all at once. Sure. I often recommend for people to, to identify the platforms that your audience uh, is going to be and really focus on going deep with that, mastering that, create a process for it, and then you can expand to other platforms too. Yeah. So, so one of the things is that um, you know, like that I've always been kind of confused about with this is like, say for uh, you all's answer when I was talking to you yesterday it was very interesting. Is that say somebody's got a product out there, like you mentioned a yoga mat, we could talk about any product just for the sake of an example, and they're like, okay, cool, I understand creating content is great. I understand. Let's just pick YouTube can mm -hmm. be a, a good channel. Uh, like how would they decide like what content to create? Do they create like literally demoing yeah. their product? Are they just like, here's three yoga exercises or something like that? Like wow, how do you think they, they decide like what is the best content to possibly create? Yeah, so it's, it's similar to launching a product, knowing the best product to launch on Amazon is based on the research. Mm -hmm. And Amazon's a search engine, but also YouTube, Google, and you need to identify what people are already searching for. So what are the specific keywords, the phrases that people are, going ahead and typing in Google or typing in YouTube, typing in Amazon. So what I, I first kind of take a step back, I make a list of all, the, all the, the keywords, all the things that people are looking for. And even even broader than that, you know, what are the problems in this niche? What are the, the challenges that my product helps solve and the benefits that it provides? And then just by doing that, I get a lot of ideas on different types of content that I can create. Um, for finding keywords in YouTube, sometimes it's just as simple as just typing in a phrase like yoga and then space and then whatever is auto-populated by YouTube, those are popular keywords that people search for. So mm -hmm. Amazon's the same process because Amazon doesn't really give you the exact, not like a Google keyword tool or anything, all the exact data. Um, so you can just kind of look and see what gets auto-populated. Um, you could also go to something like Google keyword, keyword research tools and uh, identify the keywords that way too. And then the other favorite way that I do it is I look um, at other videos that are in my niche or content that are getting a lot of views, a lot of engagement. And the great thing is online, everything's transparent. I can go to YouTube, I can see how many views that video is getting, I can look at how many comments, I can read the comments and see what people are saying or suggesting or the different dialogues and conversations around that. And then if obviously if it's got a lot of engagement, then that's a good topic that a lot of people are interested in mm -hmm. that I'm gonna then go and create content on it as well. So, so it's just doing the research on it. And, um, and like I said, you could do content around your product. So reviewing the product, you know, a demo of your product, 
what also is popular is comparisons of products. So you can compare you know, your product versus the other product out in the market um, and educate your, your niche and market on that. Mm -hmm. Showing how to use the yoga mat, of course, but then taking a step back, okay, the yoga niche, I could do yoga poses, I could do yoga tips, even go maybe into meditation and things of that nature so that you attract people from um, that still have an interest in that niche and then you can funnel and promote your product to them. And I think, you know, to take a, a, an even another step too, I also recommend that you use your content to build a list, which is the advantage of this as well because one of the downsides of Amazon, they don't give you the customer email address. The benefit of doing this is you can build an email list and with that email list, build that long-term relationship uh, you can promote you know, multiple products that you might have on Amazon. You can promote to your own store if you have a store outside of Amazon. And there's a, you know, more potential to build that long-term relationship with people too. Yeah, so, so you have a YouTube channel that has 400,000 subscribers and however many tens of millions of views, something like that. Uh, so like, what do you think, like, how did you get that channel that far? Yeah. Um, and like, what do you think, like, what do you think's changed now? Like, what's the value of that now versus maybe like five, 10 years ago? Yeah, so I, I, I first started um, more as actually a hobby. I didn't really approach it as a bu business initially, but um, when I did, I understood how keywords worked. So I just found certain keywords that people were searching for and I created videos around that. And I'm primarily in the self-development online business niche. So I was able to create videos or just sharing my morning ritual or sharing uh, how to overcome this problem or challenge that I faced. And because I knew how to optimize it on YouTube with the title, the description, the keywords, and everything that YouTube looks for, mm -hmm. I was able to rank uh, well for that. And um, if the video was good, then it, it would get more traction on YouTube. It might go viral and, and benefit like that. So, um, of course, the landscape's changed throughout the years. Um, you know, it's more competitive, YouTube, Google, social media. Yep. But at the same time, it's so much bigger now, too. And, um, you know, I, I think that the, the key is you just got to get started with it. Usually, just like with anything, it's very slow at the beginning. When I first started creating videos or writing art articles on my blog, nobody consumed it. You know, it was just kind of like I'm talking. And... Yeah, I'm just talking to myself. I'm trying to share it on my Facebook. Nobody cares. <laughs> and once you get past that point, though, and you'll have, you know, certain pieces of content that do well mm -hmm. just through the, the volume and the quantity of what you're doing and the consistency of that, that's when you get rewarded for it. And then once you kind of have that initial base of subscribers and followers, everything grows that much faster because now every piece of content you put out will have views, will have engagement, and that kind of helps it push it up even further. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it is a long-term process. It's not like you just turn it on like you can with PPC. Right. Um, you know, or building organic traffic, building up your rankings of something is something that all the algorithms there's no shortcut for it. You know, there's no loophole for it that people can exploit. Um, Google, YouTube, social media, Facebook, etc. they want to reward at the top of their searches whatever has the most quality and relevance to their audience, and rightly so. And so you have to make sure that you are adding value and you are creating quality content because if you're creating low quality content, you don't deserve to be ranked at the top. Yeah. So that's the beautiful thing about it because it forces you to actually help people and add value. And if you do that, you'll get rewarded for it. Yeah, so like one of the, the only things I think like super interesting is that like taking everything that you're saying, but I think like putting it on steroids, which is like right now is like with like live video. Yeah. It's like in the past, you know, most of the videos out there on YouTube today, I was talking with somebody in Austin that has a channel, a fitness channel with like 4 million subscribers, massive channel, and they do very, very, very little live stuff. It's like mm. they built up all this infrastructure and these processes to do nice pre-recorded videos. They've got it really dialed in. And then live video became so popular. And yeah. so like, it's not just kind of like whatever is the best wins on these big platforms like YouTube and Facebook, it's what they want to win. Yeah. And right now, for whatever reason, because they're all massive companies kind of competing with, with each other, is they understand the power of live video. So they're kind of rewarding that uh, with more views, more engagement, more reach, because we've all probably heard the stuff about these channels is that you can put something out there and like you have 400,000 subscribers. It doesn't mean you're gonna reach all of them just because oh. you have them. Same thing on Facebook with oh. page likes and that yeah. kind of thing. And so I think one of the biggest opportunities right now for people that are selling, especially physical products, 
because they're, they're easy to demonstrate with yeah. live. I mean, oh, it's yeah. a physical thing that you can actually show versus maybe doing something on your computer or that kind of business or a service. Um, so, I mean, I think live video is huge. Like, have you seen or what are your kind of thoughts around that? Specifically for somebody yeah. who has like a physical products business, like how do you think yeah. they can use kind of live video to uh, help grow their brands? Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Live video is the newest trend. And I think with the internet too, um, the reason why it just kind of you know, set it and forget it doesn't really work is the internet's always growing and evolving. So yeah. you have to evolve with it. There's new trends, new technologies, even with Amazon, it's always being updated. So you gotta be on top of this uh, type of stuff in your business. Um, and the great thing is they've made it so easy. Like now we just take our phone. Yeah. And I remember like even years ago, um, you know, it was just so much harder. There's so many barriers to do video. You had to have like a video editor and professional equipment. Whereas now it's like anybody can just go live from their phone and they're making it so easy. They want it to be more raw and authentic. And I think a lot of people are held back. They think it has to be super high quality, professional. You need expensive equipment and stuff. You have to be a great speaker. There's a lot of things that hold people back yeah. that, that really shouldn't, you know? And oftentimes the more raw and authentic, the more real it is. Um, so I, I think live is great just, just to, um, to constantly put yourself out there and just share with your audience about your product, about the, you know, the niche that you're in, adding value. Uh, one thing that's great about live is you have that back and forth interaction that you won't normally have just with a pre-recorded video. Mm -hmm. So you wanna leverage that, you wanna utilize it. So when you go live, you know, people are gonna join in and you wanna engage with them. And when you actually engage with people, they're like, they, they, they feel more involved. They yeah. feel more of a connection to you. So that's the biggest benefit that I see with live is it gives you an opportunity to engage with your fans and followers, the people that love your product. I know many of you out there are already selling on Amazon. You've got a Facebook page already. You might have a couple hundred or even a couple thousand likes or followers, but you've got to engage with them more than just you know, posting a picture or pre-recorded video, but actually get on there once in a while and say, and, and actually talk to them, you know, ask them questions and they're gonna post in the chat and you can go back and forth and they can ask you questions. You can ask for feedback, you know, what questions do you have about our product? How can I serve you more? Um, you know, is, is, I, I think just the, the, the biggest trend right now online is, is the more that you can engage with people, the better. That's the advantage that we have starting small versus these big corporations. Because a lot of these big corporations, they're way up on the top floor. Yeah. The customers are down here. There's no, there's no connection. People can't relate to that as much. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, for you, you can take that time and respond to people and connect with them and, and really meet their needs at a much deeper level. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like... One thing I like to talk about, just like we'll probably wrap up on this section, but one thing I want to talk about is that we're sitting here at the beginning of the year. Like you've done a lot of work. We were talking about this last night over dinner. Like you've done a lot of work in goal setting, personal, mm -hmm. business wise. Um, you talk about this kind of stuff on your channel. You've probably read all the books, been to all the seminars, looked at all the stuff, tried a lot of the stuff. And so I kind of want to talk about how people can get the most out of this year. Yeah. But just to kind of wrap up on the traffic piece, like say somebody, they've got their brand up and running. They're like, okay, cool. Like I want to get this kind of free traffic coming from social media. Like, what do you think their like initial game plan would be to get the maximum value possible in like the shortest amount of time? Yeah, so I, I would say first, the more time that you can uh, spend just kind of knowing what type of pieces of content that are getting the most engagement, what people are looking for and what your market wants, yeah. the more time you can just really get clear on that, you can formulate a strategy around that. Um, and then, you know, once you're clear on that, then I like to create a lot of my content in bulk. Mm -hmm. So instead of just kind of doing it every day or every few hours, I might spend a day out of the week, I might record a bunch of videos based on keywords, I might write a bunch of articles, I might create a bunch of images for my Facebook, for my Instagram. And then the great thing with technology is you can actually schedule that out. Mm -hmm. So there's tools like uh, Hootsuite and, and Meet Edgar and these different types of buffer and stuff where you can schedule out your content um, and so that's, that's what I recommend that people do, um, just to kind of start right away with it. Yep. And I think, you know, it's, it, it is a, a process of you put it out there, you see what kind of engagement that it gets, and then you go back, you look at, okay, what's working, you do more of that, whatever's not working, you get rid of. Mm -hmm. And so it's a constant, um, just trying to make things better and better and adding value with it. But yep. I would say, you know, just create a bunch of content and drip it out over a period mm -hmm. of time. And, um, you know, you can, like I said, you can find people that can help you with that too to create that content. Okay, cool. I know one of the things that I did recently when we were looking at doing more stuff on, um, pointing at the check, it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. <laughs> we're looking at doing more stuff on YouTube 
is that I was like, you know, I feel like there's like a formula to this whole thing. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, what I did anyways, which I thought was kind of cool and got some value out of it, is I looked at like 10 of the top channels in the market. So I looked at 10 of the top channels, then like on YouTube, you can look at their videos that have been released by time. So I looked at the past year, and of those videos for each channel that were released in the past year, I just did this in a spreadsheet, like which one had the most views, like a disproportionate amount of views. Mm -hmm. It's like, sure, the ones that have been around for 11 months or something like that should have a little more views than the ones that have just recently, but on every single one of those channels, like there was at least one that was kind of like disproportionate in how many views that it had. Like maybe they, I mean, these are big channels, so maybe they had like 50,000 views, 100,000 views, yeah. 400,000 views, but then one of them would have like 2 million views. Yeah. Just complete anomaly. Yeah. And so like I took those videos, so basically one from each channel, 10 videos, and just kind of watched them all. I looked mm -hmm. in like, what are they doing? How long are the videos? Uh, I used one of yours as an example. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how long are the videos? Like what are they, what's in the video? Yeah. What are they talking about? Like what's the title, the description? Um, and I found, uh, you know, there is kind of like a formula for these things and it's gonna, it's gonna vary completely based on the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I would look at that for your market and you can do some pretty free, like free research like that. Yeah, and yeah. I think can get a ton of value out of it. Yeah. So I, I imagine you could probably do that same thing for really any channel, whether yeah. it's Instagram, oh, yeah. um, I guess I don't know that much about Snapchat, but I guess everything disappears yeah. on there. So <laughs> maybe I'll be able to do it there. Uh, but everywhere else it should be pretty relevant. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. With YouTube, I mean, it's. There, there's certain things that I follow that we have a system for in our business from just making sure the keywords and the title, three times in the description, mm -hmm. the tags, different, you know, even with tags, you can put in different variations. If there's, let's say that um, we're talking about goal setting and I know I can just search for goal setting and I can see the top channels out there and I can put their channel name or things like that in my tag so that when someone's watching their video, my video has a chance of being relevant and showing up next to it. Oh, okay. So there's yeah. things like that that you can do. Um, with it, but the biggest the biggest thing that YouTube looks at, but I also believe with Google and social media, um, but it's it, it's they they want to determine they have algorithms to help determine what is this quality, right? And the biggest thing YouTube looks at is watch time, so how long that someone watches the video, and of course likes and comments and subscribers. Those things matter too, mm -hmm. you know, uh, external links and embeds and whatnot. But the watch time is the most important thing. Okay, so. The great thing is it can have a viral effect if you really crack down the system for it. And once you identify that and you can create a piece of content that has that engagement, it can really take off. I've had a video that got over 3 million views mm. and uh, you know it's, it's just because it's a quality video and it had so much engagement to it. So mm -hmm. it's hard to always replicate that of course, yeah. but once you kind of know and you have a general idea of what it takes to do that. You just follow that system for every piece of content that you create. Sweet. Um, so yeah, so getting a lot of engagement over here. Uh, you know, we've got people, uh, Andrea says, we can probably get to some of this in a little bit, but Andrea says, could you please give me a quick rundown on how to actually go live on Facebook? <laughs> um, answer's pretty simple. Um, from your phone, I believe, yep. unless you're going live on your like personal, like normally like we've done it from the phone and you just download the Facebook Pages app. You download the Facebook Pages app and literally like, Facebook wants you to go live, so they make it pretty straightforward. So right from there, like if you're gonna post on your page, there's literally a button, I believe, that just says go live. Yep. And you press it like twice and you are actually live, so be careful with the button. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can go live that way. Uh, you can do it from the computer just about the same way. Uh, on your personal profile, you can do it in a group, you can do it yep. in an event, I believe, uh, for sure on a page. And so it's uh, basically the same place where you go to post something on Facebook, there's a way to go live right there. Um, we got a, let me see, I saw another one good in here. Uh, oh, J Janice says this is awesome, thank you. So thanks for having us. So next we wanna talk about uh, goals and how you're gonna get the most value out of 2018. I think this will be a cool thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, Stefan and I are both super passionate about this. Uh, and so what I'd like to know is just so we can check back here is how many of you have goals for 2018? Do you have an idea of what you wanna accomplish this year? If you do, go ahead and just comment here. We're, we're live actually on Facebook and on YouTube. So comment on either one and just say, yes, I have goals. Or just like the post or like the video. Just say, yes, I have goals for 2018. Or no, I don't have them yet. I don't know where to start. Uh, I don't like goals. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Whatever your kind of response is, let us know. Because uh, I'm curious to kind of see where everyone is at with this. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. So, you know, we're sitting here very beginning of the year, first week of the year. Uh, this is when everyone's super motivated. They're done with all the holiday stuff. All that's wrapped up. And they're like, 
cool, I've got maybe last year was great and mm -hmm. I want to make it better. Or maybe last year wasn't so good and I want this year to be very good. And I kind of have a clean slate here and um, they're, they're ready to get the most value out of this year. And if they're sitting mm -hmm. here watching this video, they likely either own a business or want to build a business. Yeah. I am likely have personal goals too. And so based on everything you've learned and researched, you know, what do you think it takes to really get value out of a year? Um, whether it's in your personal life, your business life, like how do you structure things? Like what do you do to make sure that at the end of the year, at the yeah. end of 2018, you're like, yes, like yeah. this was an awesome year. I accomplished a lot, yeah. I did a lot. Yeah, well, I, I think the first thing that I do, one of my favorite things is before I even plan for the year ahead, I like to reflect and debrief the previous year. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a process that I go through. I look at all the wins, all the successes, all the accomplishments, all the things that went really well. Because I, I, I believe in that if you just take that in, it's going to give you so much confidence. It's going to help you build momentum that you can then carry forward with you. Yeah. Um, I also even look at the challenges. What were the challenges, the stresses, the struggles, the failures? And what did I learn from that? Because if you're not learning from your past mistakes, your past failures, then you're gonna carry that with you into the, the, the future year. Mm -hmm. So I like to debrief things, uh, get really clear on that, soak as much value and extract that from my previous year. Um, and then when it comes to planning ahead for the, the year, the quarter, the month, um, I first like to get clear on what my vision is. Because I really believe your, your one year goals or quarterly goals are just kind of stepping stones to the ultimate vision that you have for your life. And you gotta know what that is. Yeah. Because that your goal should bring you one step closer towards where you want to be 10 years, 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been into having vision boards and I've, you know, I've written out my vision for my life and what I want my lifestyle to be. And I break it down into each area of my life. So I'll break down my health, I'll break down for my business, my finances, my relationship, my spiritual life, contribution. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once I'm very clear on that, I, uh, I do a brainstorming process where I just brainstorm all the different goals that I could set for each area of my life. And of course, I'm not gonna do them all. And I try to narrow that down on what's most important, what are the things I'm most excited for, mm -hmm. um, for each area of my life. So, I plan out the year making sure that I have that balance going in. Because I think a lot of people, they just look at goals and you know, often it's, it's just, okay, well, I just want to make more money or I want to lose weight. But it, it's not really specific. It's not clear. They don't have a plan for it. There's a lot of things they don't really set up in order to ensure that they're actually going to follow through and achieve that. So yeah. uh, I think you just got to spend that time really planning it out. Plan out exactly what spe uh, specific I follow the, the SMART acronym, I'm not sure if you know what that is, what stands for specific, measurable, uh, attainable or achievable, realistic and having a timeline. Yeah. So I try to make sure that each of my goals have that and then I've got a system to follow up, mm. whether it's every week or every month, to make sure that I'm on track, to make sure you know, I'm still making progress towards it and if I'm not, can I make the necessary adjustments? Because I think that setting goals is the easy part Anyone can do that, but 98% yeah. of people that set your, their New Year's resolutions don't follow through on right, it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I want to be in the 2%. The 2% of people actually make sure that they follow through and they have a system to regularly check in. Yeah. So, like, how do you, how do you think, like, somebody sets goals? Uh, a lot of people probably heard about, you know, the idea of SMART. You can look it up. There's yep. 82 million blog posts about it. Like, so many people set the goals. Like, how do you, what do you think they need to do to make sure that at the end of the year they actually happen? Like, yeah. what does it take to go from super motivated in January to December, yes, I absolutely crushed it, I got these goals done. Like, what do you think that takes, or like, what are some like tricks or strategies there? Yeah, so I, I think one of the biggest things is accountability. Yeah. Um, oftentimes when we set our goals, we say, hey, I'm gonna achieve this or I'm gonna do this, but because we're only accountable to ourselves, we can easily back out, and yeah. there's no consequence. No one else is gonna know about it. Uh, one of the things that I've done with Project Life Mastery over the last six years now is I publicly share my goals. Mm -hmm. So every year I publicly shared it and it's uncomfortable for me to do that, right? Because yeah. it creates a lot of pressure. But I, you know, pressure creates diamonds. When you publicly declare something, there's more of a consequence where if I don't follow through, then I'm going to lose respect, credibility, I'm not going to feel good about myself. So that's one form of accountability that I've leveraged. Um, but I also believe in having accountability, it could be a mastermind group or, or um, an accountability buddy or a coach or a mentor, someone that can help you stay on track, just like you know, professional athletes or uh, you know, high achievers, they have a coach or they have that form of accountability. And the way I look at it, you know, most people, they have that accountability back when you went to school, like when you're in university or high school, 
there's a project that's due or, and you might not want to do it, but you still get it done because the consequence of not doing it by that deadline is you're going to fail or you're going to get a bad grade. So yeah. if you can create that accountability in your life, um, either by you know, having that accountability group or someone that can help to make sure that you're on track, it could be a personal trainer, a coach, uh, that's been the most powerful way to make sure that I do follow through. Cool. Like one thing that I, um, I've been a huge fan of recently is something that it was invented by some researcher, I guess. It's called WHOOP. I don't know if you would have heard of it. Oh. But yeah, so basically stands for Wish Outcome Obstacle Plan. And so what people have found out is a lot of times you're like, sweet, yeah, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to build this business and like no problem. And maybe even worse, kind of, or better, depending on how you look at it, you've tried this before. Um, so you have some information about probably why it didn't work out before and why you're back here setting the same goal again. And so like the idea behind this is like you start off with your wish. Like what is it? No restrictions, no yeah. reality, whatever. What is the sort of, what is it that I want here? Like I want to lose, uh, you know, 100 pounds by the end of the year. I want to build a business that does a million dollars. Ideally, it's somewhat realistic. And that's where this is kind of a, a check on that. Because what happens next is then you talk about the outcome. So the outcome is more or less kind of the smart thing you're talking about. Get very specific. Yeah. What exactly are you trying to accomplish here so that it's concrete? And then you think about an obstacle or maybe mm -hmm. multiple obstacles. Yeah. Like what is the biggest thing that would prevent this from happening? Yeah. Um, maybe it's that all your friends are overweight or all your friends are broke or yeah. you get scared as soon as something gets difficult or something, you know, especially in business. Um, and so then you think about those obstacles and then you think about the plan side. So the plan is basically, what are you going to do if that happens? Mm -hmm. And so I've heard a lot of people talk about this kind of like developing these kind of if-then statements for your life. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, if a friend invites me to go eat at a fast food restaurant, yeah. I will say no, or I will yeah. make a suggestion of somewhere else, or I'll invite them over to my house to eat something healthy or something like that. And you can think of the same kind of things for business. And so like this sort of prepares you for yeah. the inevitabilities that are going to happen that are going to trip you up. Um, so I think it's, it's pretty powerful and a lot of times, you know, it's kind of some stuff that, that comes from like stoicism too, which is like mm -hmm. thinking about like the bad stuff that could happen and not to like make yourself all negative and down, but so you can develop a plan. So like what happens if this does happen? Like I've heard yeah. people talk about it, special forces and this and that, like they spend days doing this. Like what is everything that could possibly go yeah. wrong with this? And what are we going to do about it? And yeah. so I think that could be super powerful for people too. Yeah. So you're anticipating, right? Yeah. If you anticipate the potential problems or challenges, I think that's key. Another, another thing that I do is I also have um, like a reward structure set up. So, um, you know, I'll say to myself, well, if I achieve this goal, you know, I'm going to hustle, I'm going to grind to achieve it, but I'll have a reward afterwards. Yeah. And sometimes that reward motivates me more than just the reward of actually completing that goal. So right. if it's uh, creating a new product that I'm going to launch, I know it's going to require a lot for me to be able to do that, but by the end of it, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to take a week off. I'm going to go on a vacation, that break, and that's going to be my reward for achieving it. Yeah. Um, or if you want to lose 30 pounds, maybe reward yourself by saying, hey, I'm going to go on a $1,000 shopping spree. You know, something like that because we are motivated by pain and pleasure. So mm -hmm. if you can have that pleasure and even a consequence for not doing it, I believe those are things that can help make sure that you fall through too. Yeah, cool. So like... Uh Got a lot of people posting over here. A lot of people saying, uh, yes, I have goals. Uh, Rajan says, yes, I have goals. Carol and Michelle, yes, I have goals. Says fine-tuning them all the time. Uh, Andrea Donar, yes, I have goals. Need to fine-tune, however. Uh, so here's some. So Aiden says, yes, I have goals. I want to make monthly sales of $10,000 to $50,000 at least. So that's pretty sweet. So cool. Mm -hmm. looks like a lot of people are kind of on the same track here. So hopefully you either have them and maybe based on this video, some, you get some tips to kind of refresh them, uh, make the plan a little easier to kind of follow through. Or if you don't have them yet, go ahead and set them because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, you kind of need to know where you're headed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, you know, something that, that, that I find really interesting, I'm interested to hear what you have to say, is like the idea of like balance versus like focusing like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I was literally on the walk over here from the hotel, I was like listening to an audio book that was talking about Albert Einstein. So yeah. like Albert Einstein, very uh, successful, he achieved a lot, he's one of the most memorable people in all of history. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were saying that like in his life, you know, his family life was horrible. He at one point I think tried to, I heard it this first time I ever heard yeah. this, tried to give a contract to his wife that basically said, you can't touch me, you don't have to do anything, don't ask me any questions. Oh, wow. And then they ended up just because like he d needed to kind of get rid of all that stuff in his life or he felt that he needed yeah. to so that he could focus on his work. Did the same thing with his kids, um, did not have a good relationship there. So we see this like super high achiever, 
but all kinds of stuff that depending on your values, yeah. like you may not be happy with. And they yeah. gave another example of a baseball player I don't follow very much, but mm-hmm. Ted Williams, uh, one of the most successful baseball players ever, just completely fanatical about swinging, uh, practice like crazy. Also, horrible family life, yeah. uh, incredibly uh, unsocial, just because he put everything into that one area. Yeah. So like, where do you think, how do you sort of make sense of all this? Like, yeah. is it better to be balanced or is it better to focus like crazy in one area? Like, how do you think about that? Yeah, well, I, I think it really depends what someone wants for their life. you got to get very clear on what you want, what is your vision, what does that really look like. Uh, I know a lot of people, they want to build an online business so that it can create more freedom, so that they can spend more time with their fr- family, their friends, and, and, and that's a high value that they have, or to travel, or whatever that might be. So for me, I've always valued having that balance. Um, yeah. I knew that just spending all my time, my energy, my business, and making money um, that wasn't really going to fulfill me. That wasn't really going to make me happy. And I've always believed there's areas of life that are much more important that actually give you that, that deeper sense of joy and fulfillment. For me, that's my health, my emotions, my relationship, my spirituality, mm. my family, my friends. So I think at times you do have to go out of balance. I don't think really fully being in balance really exists. Mm. It's kind of like a teeter-totter. You know, it's only going to be balanced for so long before someone, you know, it kind of goes a certain direction. So yeah. at times, I-, I believe that you have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to get off balance. You might have to say no to hanging out with your friends or family and, and really focus in to build your business. Um, but at a certain point, you got to get clear on, on, on the lifestyle that you want to have and bring, bring everything back into a certain level of balance. Okay. There's times for me where I might be focused on a project where I've fully immersed myself with no other distractions. I might go and travel, spend a week somewhere. I can get so much done in that one week that might normally take me a month or two months to do, but I'm getting out of balance in other areas, but I always try to return to the balance as well. Yeah. And then the other piece too, I, I believe in balance because I think that every area of your life influences one another. I think that by taking care of your health, your energy, your body, working out, it's going to help your business. It's going to help you have more energy, be more productive. You're going to live a lot longer. By really spending your time, I'm big into doing morning rituals and spending time you know, reading and, and you know, meditating and doing things for your emotions. I think the more time you spend doing that, it's going to help your business and help you make more money too. Yeah. I think that by having a really great relationship, that also is going to help your business and help your success as well. So. Um, I think they all kind of work together and can help just like how money can also help your health, it can help your emotions, it can help you travel more, invest more, spend more time with loved ones. So, you know, I think it depends on what someone really wants, but for me personally, the balance has been a really important piece and uh, not trying to be perfect with it, you know, you're going to get off balance, off track at different times, but as long as you return to that, and that's why I like to, you know, say have goals in each area of your life so that you're progressing towards better health, better vitality, a better body, better relationship, maybe contribution. Hmm. And uh, you know, that way you, kinda, you, you still make sure that you're maintaining or at least growing every area of your life. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to agree. I mean, I think like an important kind of like distinction to add on top of that is like, okay, you wanna achieve these things in your life, you wanna have a good balanced life, or maybe you just wanna go all in on one yeah. certain project, and that's fine if that's kind of what you wanna do and you're willing to sacrifice kind of everything else. I mean, some people are, no problem, do whatever you want. There's no rules to this sort of life thing. Uh, but like, whether it's balanced or that, it's like, I think it's incredibly important to like, not waste time. Um, I think people waste a hell of a lot of time, like they watching movies uh, I mean I like watching movies just as much as anybody else but like you know I think the average statistics are something like people watch like something crazy I don't even remember 20 40 hours of TV a week or something crazy yeah. a couple hours here and there sure no problem we got to relax you got to kick back maybe it's a family thing for you perfect go go for it and do it but it's where people get into wasting time which is mm-hmm. I think where they they miss out on a lot of things in life like you could sit there and say I'm going to grow my business. But if you're doing things like just sitting there and like cooking refresh on your email to yeah. see if anybody emails you 72 times a day and you're never able to focus and get anything done, like that doesn't help at all. It doesn't mean you're balanced. It doesn't mean you're focused. It just means you're wasting time. Yeah. And I think the same thing with relationships. So if relationships are a value for you, which it sounds like it is for me as well, um, you can sit there with your significant other or your kids and you can watch TV for five hours and not have the same exactly. value from... Yeah. 10 minutes of sitting there and having like a meaningful conversation with them. 
So you're not necessarily adding more hours to the day or anything like that. You're just getting more value out of the time that you're actually spending mm-hmm. rather than just kind of like mindlessly going through the motions, mm-hmm. which I think is going to be huge because, I mean, uh, in this year, you've got something like 8,000 something hours. And so how you spend those hours is basically going to be uh, affect directly how, how well you feel at the end of the year, basically what you got out of it. So yeah. I think that's yeah. super important. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, they don't, because they don't have a plan, they're reactive. Yeah. They're reactive to everything that comes up. You know, yeah. they, they reactively just go on Facebook and Facebook can be like a black hole that just sucks your time. You're there for five minutes and then before you know it, three hours have gone by. Yeah. And yeah. Like, Why the hell did I get on Facebook to begin with? And same thing <laughs> with TV because they're, they're all designed to hook you, right? They're, they're designed yeah. to like pull you in and take your time from you, uh, all these different demands. So I think it comes down to having that, being proactive and having a plan. You know, for me, I plan out my my day, I plan out my week, I plan out my year. I have a purpose for my day. If you don't have the plan, then you're gonna fit into someone else's plan. You know, and if you don't run the day, the day's gonna run you. So yeah. I like to, okay, well, am I gonna, you know, when am I gonna go to the gym today? When am I gonna work on my business? When am I gonna schedule that time for my relationship or my friends and family? And by being proactive and strategic about it, I can make sure that I, I'm, I'm there 100%. It's more quality time. It's not necessarily about how much time, yeah. but you know, if you're proactive with it, you can, you know, if you go to the gym and you don't know what you're doing, you don't have a plan for it, you're not gonna get as much from it versus if you actually have a plan and a purpose for that, yeah. you're gonna get so much more out of that workout. And I think mm-hmm. the tr- same is true for your business, especially your relationship um, and any other area of your life. So the more time that you spend just really planning and getting clear and having a purpose and outcome for what you're doing, I think you'll get so much more from it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, for almost anything that I do now, like the first way I've kind of like trained myself to think, I just had to do it kind of mechanically at first, Mm -hmm. but I've trained myself to basically think like, okay, what is the outcome for this? What is the outcome for this video? Like, what is the outcome for coming to Vancouver? What's the outcome for, you know, this workout or this phone call or, or whatever I'm doing in business or personal life? And I think that's, Super important because otherwise you're just kind of like showing up yeah. and like, well, that didn't really go how I want. But like, did yeah. I ever clarify what I actually wanted exactly. out of the thing? Exactly. Probably not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sweet. So yeah, this has been really good. We'll probably uh, kind of wrap things up here. Still, lots of people on here. Just kept kind of growing. So thanks everyone for joining us here. Uh, this will be live here on Facebook and YouTube. So you're more than happy to rewatch this. Uh, you know, do whatever you can to make this year the best you possibly can. I mean, go ahead, follow Stefan on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, Project Life Mastery. Uh, follow us, Facebook and YouTube as well. Uh, we're going to be releasing a lot of great stuff. Uh, starting next week, we're actually releasing another 100 red hot Amazon product opportunities. So you really have no excuse not to build this kind of business or grow a business you already have. So like us on Facebook, you'll see us there. Check out Stefan on YouTube and Facebook as well. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, let's make this an awesome year together. So uh, happy 2018 and we'll talk soon. Thank you.